I'm with Dr. Ian e. Franklin. He's from the London Vascular Clinic and also a CX organizing member and also course director of the CX Venus Workshop. Dr. Franklin, could you, could you just please tell us what were the highlights of this year's CX Venus Workshop? Well, we only finished it a few minutes ago. It's possibly a bit early to say. I think for me the highlights were the new technologies that we introduced that hadn't been displayed before and the fact that we, I think we're getting, this is the seventh year that we've done it, and I think we're getting slightly better at laying it out so people circulate effectively without any bottlenecks or traffic jams so that the flow was nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. There was a constant animated buzz all the way through the course and the whole thing seems to have gone very well. So I think that was the highlight for me. What makes this course different from other similar courses in the world? Well, well it, it, it's, it's unique. Nobody else runs a veins course like this. We, we, we set it up in a series of independent practical training stations and it, it, there's no set rigid timetable so people aren't obliged to spend a set amount of time at each station they can go straight to the ones that interest them and they can ignore the ones that they're already familiar with mm -hmm. so it's a very effective and efficient use of people's time uh, and when they get to the stations the interaction is it's between them and another physician it, mm -hmm. it, it's not a it's not between them and a, a sales rep like like it might be in the trade hall so the the quality of the interaction is one-on-one -on -one teaching or small group teaching mm -hmm. with an enthusiast and an expert in that particular technique. So that, that combination of flexibility uh, and one-on-one -on -one teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the third thing is we, we, it's comprehensive. We, we include absolutely anything that's of phlebological interest, as it were. So, uh, so we're we, talking we, about superficial venous disease as well as deep venous disease. Both. We, 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 it's a big change this year. In, in the past, when we started, we focused mainly on superficial you know, varicose vein type treatments. Yeah. But as the years have gone by, we've, we've uh, included uh, issues affecting the deep system. And this year, the thing that was really different this year is that we had a particular emphasis on deep vein stenting, acute deep vein thrombosis treatments, intravascular ultrasound, uh, and it was packed. We had loads of people all coming looking at that. We've never done that before. So I'm Do you very know more or less how many people attended the course? Not yet. We're about to get the figures in a minute. We've been swiping everyone in and out, and we'll <laughs> get the figures later on. I'm very keen to know what they are. So are there any specific technologies that you would like to highlight? Yes, the, the, the thing that the, the biggest, completely new thing for us this year was IVUS or intravascular ultrasound, mm -hmm. which is a, a fundamental technique to uh, many deep venous interventions. We've, we've never showcased that before. Whereas this year we put a great big emphasis on it, a lot of space, and we allocated a lot of time to it. So it seems and it was very, like very popular. imaging is playing a key role also in the treatment. Well, it, of it, it, the it always has for, for veins, but. His imaging's got better. I mean, initially the imaging was basically venography, which is rather invasive and risky and required fluoroscopy. And then uh, <coughs> the, the non-invasive ultrasound changed things. And then the thing that really changed was when surgeons started doing their own imaging. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we can start doing our own intravascular imaging. So uh, we get much better anatomic information. It's done by the people doing the procedure. So that's made a you know, fundamental difference for us. Yes. One of the key highlights of the CX Symposium is that it tries to incorporate in their practical courses what is seen also in the main plenary session. How can you correlate these two in the Venus field? Well, we, we, we try and, um, I mean, the, the teaching of practical techniques mm -hmm. doesn't lend itself very well to a lecture hall type setting any more than you would teach the guitar by standing at a podium. You, you would do that in a mm -hmm. small group and one-to-one. -one. So what we try and do is, in the Venus workshop, we have all these little hands-on training sessions, small group, one-to-one, -one, and then we complement that with the, the Venus plenary day tomorrow, where we discuss these, we discuss the academic uh, uh, perspective, yeah, the academic context uh, of these things. So on one day, people can learn the actual technical details, and the next day, they can discuss the indications and when to use and when not to use and what the alternatives might be in, in a different setting. So that, that's why we try and yeah. have the interplay between the two. So moving on to the plenary sessions, perhaps tomorrow the delegates will be able to see what thermal and non-thermal techniques, or what they have been seen here, can they actually... Well, they, they've all been on display here during the Venus workshop. What, what they will see tomorrow is a more overarching discussion of the relative merits of one compared to another, and more of the, um, uh, more of the research data and the clinical data um, of what supports the use of the different techniques, which may not always come out in a practical teaching session, but it does come out in the in the lecture hall. So tomorrow will be more discussion about uh, data, clinical evidence, uh, 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 and that sort of thing. Okay, so could we talk about which thermal techniques are playing like a major role right now? Well, it was the thermal techniques which really replaced stripping. Mm -hmm. And 
broadly speaking, the thermal techniques, right? Radio frequency ablation or endovenous laser, which are just two different ways of heating and coagulating the inside of the vein. Uh, and these techniques have now been around for quite a long time, so there's some very good data. In fact, there's some very good five-year data being presented tomorrow, uh, and, and some, and some longer-term data even for some of the techniques, which we're looking forward to mm -hmm. you know, hearing. And in non-thermal techniques, it seems to be something well, that is newer in this. Yeah, the thing about the thermal techniques is that they were a huge advance from stripping because you no longer had to make incisions, you didn't need anesthetic, yeah. but you did need to make injections in the leg because the tech, the, the, if you're heating the vein, it would be painful, so you have to anesthetize it. Yeah. The, the non-thermal techniques don't require all those injections, so you can treat somebody without having to do all those needle local mm -hmm. anesthetic injections. So it's another step forward, and there's been a great deal of interest in in particular, that there are two glues, whereby yes. you can put the catheter in the vein and glue it shut without having to heat it or needle it. And, and so we're presenting, we've been presenting two different glues over the last two days, okay. and we'll be discussing data on those two glues in the plenary session tomorrow. Could, we, could you tell us a little bit of the data that is going to be presented? Well, of the two glue techniques, um, one of them is relatively new and there's rather less data. The other one has been around for longer mm -hmm. and they've actually been involved in randomised controlled trials. So there's some combination of trial data and cohort data. In other words, big groups of patients who've been treated and then followed up. Mm -hmm. and, and the data seems to be that they, these techniques were at least as good as the endothermal treatments, but the details will come out in the plenary session tomorrow. But we will need more time until we get like yes, final but, results. Yes, but not much more. I mean, it's, perfect, it's pretty obvious already they work quite well. Yes. And already the, 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 these techniques seem to be holding up quite well against the, the, the thermal techniques. So, yes, more time is always useful, but we're not going to need a huge amount of time before we start to make decisions on that. Now, with all these office-based techniques that we have now, and the efficacy results that they are showing are comparable to surgery, is there still room for surgery, for open surgery? The, the, the results are better than surgery. It's not comparable. The results are better. And okay. I think there's a... Most of it... I mean, most of us would feel that there is very little place for conventional surgery for varicose veins now. Very little, well, well, if none. Personally, I feel none, but there are some who feel there is a place, and I respect that for you, because the surgical techniques work, and mm -hmm. I'm not saying that there's more than one way of handling veins, so I'm not dismissive of them. I mean, some, you know, some people do them because those techniques work well and done, done properly, there is a place. So I'm not, not dismissing it completely, but on balance, I, my view would be, most people's views would be that the... Uh, endovenous techniques are replacing conventional surgical techniques which involve making incisions and giving general anaesthetics and yes. that sort of thing. Finally, you have been a member of the CX organizing committee for a long time and also a delegate. Mm. Could you please tell us what makes the Charing Cross Symposium, Symposium special? Uh, I would highlight one single thing, it's the audience that's in charge here. Um, it's, this isn't about self-appointed experts sitting on a panel and talking down to people, but here we understand that every single participant actually is an expert and so what we value more than anything else is uh, people, quest people asking questions from the floor, people taking part in interactive discussion um, and doing it in a very interactive way. This isn't about people lecturing to a passive audience, mm -hmm. here it's the audience that's in charge and that, that's what's special for me. Okay, thank you very much Dr. Franklin Pleasure. and we hope to see you next year again in Charing Cross. Thank you very much. Okay.